this is interesting. Merlin mentioned that, uh, at least I took him to mean, that many in his home state of Maryland pronounce Merlin as Merlin. But now I think he says he signs it Merlin Berry in, in Merlin, as many pronounce Maryland up here. Interesting. <laughs> I wouldn't have known that. Um, first I knew of any kind of unique uh, language of Maryland. It was Many years ago I was talking to a pal that uh, just moved up from Maryland to New Jersey, and he used the term ripped off to mean not stolen from, but to get drunk. I wonder if that's a unique uh, Maryland term. Anyway, uh, Merlin says, boy, what a name, that lucky guy. Uh, the New English Bible, 1961, versus the Revised English Bible, 1989. I think I have this straight, that the latter is a revision of the former, I bought a copy of the former, New Testament only, in 1964, in what seems to me to be a Carolina baby blue cover in paperback. My wife, Joan, has the whole Bible in the 1989 version. I know that you have given opinions about lots of translations into English, but I didn't make notes about your conclusions. What do you think of these two translations? Okay, pause there. I always really like the New English Bible. It's a looser translation, and occasionally you kind of wish it were a little more literal, but it's a dynamic equivalence translation, and I think it's good. I've always very much enjoyed reading it. Same thing with the Jerusalem Bible, same approach, though the result is rather different. Uh, the New American Bible, uh, the Catholic Bible, that seems to me kind of uh, a kind of a hybrid thing, like my own pre-Nicene New Testament. Sometimes it tries to be very literal, but uh, it's uh, often more of a dynamic equivalence, and I, I've always found that one fascinating, too. One summer, I uh, summer of 76, I read through... Uh, I guess it was stretched into the fall. I read seven translations of the New Testament in their entirety, back to back, and it was fascinating. I think I read uh, Schoenfield's Authentic New Testament, the Jerusalem Bible, New American Bible, Jerusalem, New English, New American Standard, uh, revised standard and maybe J.B. Phillips though I've lost count now uh, and I took all sorts of notes in the margins because various things popped out as I read familiar texts with different wording it's, uh, that's one of the great features of reading these, uh, these things even if you know Greek because uh, to see what nuance somebody else inferred, it just opens up all kinds of possibilities. Um, so even though I've done my own translation, I uh, still am quite interested to compare other people's translations to see what they saw in it. Uh, so I've always liked the New English Bible. I've n never thought people ought to restrict themselves to these looser, more idiomatic translations if they're studying, because you really do need to know the original wording. So I would say, if you're reading that, uh, good, uh, but maybe also ought to read something like the New American Standard and compare. Although uh, the the uh, opposite is true, too. If you're primarily reading a very literal one like the New American Standard, you uh, might also benefit from reading a looser one alongside of it. And sometimes they will uh, tell you something that just the literal one would not. For instance, one of my uh, favorite examples is in First Corinthians 7, this strange business about if a man feels he's behaving unbecomingly toward his virgin, what the heck is that about? Uh, it, it sounds strange to us, but, but only because something was obvious enough to the writer, he didn't bother to explain it. Uh, it's not a criticism of the text. But we're kind of left asking, what, uh, what is he talking about? And that's going to be, I'm sure, on uh, 
the human Bible, our uh, is that in the Bible uh, segment soon. But uh, some people have said, well, it's I guess it's about a Christian dad who is keeping his daughter from getting married. Maybe he should let her go ahead. That's got severe lexical problems with it. That That's almost uh, obscene uh, in ancient Greek in the setting. To speak of uh, his virgin, meaning his daughter, it's nah. Uh, some say, well, maybe it means that the guy should no longer keep his fiance on the string. I knew a guy that got engaged, and it was nine years before they got married. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, I don't happen to know whether they got friendly in the meantime or not, but uh, uh, the uh, but the advice is if you want to keep her a virgin, all the better. But if she's getting on past childbearing years, let them marry. It's no sin. Why the heck is the guy engaged to her at all if he's going to keep not marrying her? That doesn't make any sense. Well, what does is a reference to a practice that uh, we hear about in the second and third centuries uh, called, uh, uh, well, in, in Latin, virgines sub introducti, or celibate marriage. Uh, and uh, that's discussed a great deal, where you're legally married, but you either never have sex or you swear off it once you embrace the encratite celibacy gospel. The translators of the New English Bible, correctly in my opinion, realize that's what they're talking about. You're cohabiting, uh, but living as brother and sister, even though you're legally married. Uh, uh, the, however, that could easily lead to problems like adultery or prostitution, where the, the man can't stand it anymore, but the woman won't give in. Hey, you know, I'm spiritually married to Christ. I'm afraid you're out of luck. Go take a cold shower. Well, what's he going to do? It's just like the divorce prohibition, right? If you divorce your wife, you're forcing her to become an adulteress. Because what choice does she have but to get remarried? But that doesn't count in the eyes of God yet. You know, it's, uh, she has to. But you're making her into an adulteress. It's your fault, not hers. Very interesting approach, I find. Well, it's the... the uh, uh, same sort of uh, thing in a way uh, that uh, you're making somebody an adulterer or an adulteress. Don't get into that situation. If it looks like you're not going to be able to maintain it, just forget it. Get married. Uh, and, uh, or, or, you know, consummate it. That's pretty weird stuff. You can't preach on that. Uh, and most people reading it have no idea that was going on in the early church. Of course, Roman Catholics do, because this is what they think was the situation with... Uh, I know you're thinking, how, how the heck did I get on this? Uh, the, uh, there was a situation between Mary and Joseph, right? Joseph was a widower. He had kids from his marriage. Then he married Mary just so Jesus not his son, would not be a bastard legally. Uh, and they, they knew this because they were in touch with this practice and figured, well, I guess they did it. Okay, interesting. But the New English Bible, I think, alone sees this and puts it that way. I like the New English Bible. I wish I could say the same thing for the Revised English Bible, which is like the new RSV, a more politically correct one that tries to introduce egalitarian and inclusive language where the original does not support it. Uh, and I'm thinking of how they don't like brothers or brethren. And uh, so, so I think the new RSV has... Uh, brothers and sisters, though the text does not say that. It's not that they couldn't say it, like the uh, Mark 3 passage where Jesus goes back to uh, Nazareth. They say, are not his uh, brothers here? And they list them. And are not his sisters among us? Uh, well, uh, some would say, yeah, brothers and sisters. And why is that? Well, do you think this was some kind of male-only cult like the Mithras religion? Well, not that it was either, really. 
Uh, well, yeah, it sort of was. Uh, you know, there's no point in making the early church look more egalitarian than it was. So, well, what does the uh, the R E B do with that? Instead of brethren, it's Christians. That's an anachronism. You can't do that. Uh, and the the Bible actually says that they were called. Uh, Christianoi, uh, first in Antioch, etc., etc. Uh, and then uh, it appears only two other times. Uh, Herod Agrippa II says to Paul, You're trying to make, you would make me a Christian uh, in five minutes if I let you. And then in 1 Peter, if you are persecuted, suffering as a Christian, etc., it sort of matters that Christian is used in the New Testament as a label applied by outsiders. Christians don't use it of themselves, and it's anachronistic. Uh, it's important to know that, but you're never going to know it if you're reading the stinking uh, Revised English Bible. I wish these people would leave it alone. J.B. Phillips came out with a kind of a more straight-faced, uh, literal version of his great New Testament, the New Testament in modern English. Uh, what is so great about it is his stylish paraphrasing approach. Again, the dynamic equivalent. There's really a magic to Phillips's translation, as everybody used to know. But then around 73, he came out with a more tame version. Eh, who cares? Just read the original. Uh, there's a new version of the New American Bible, which I don't think it has interesting readings, at least at some points, like the original did. Uh, there's a New Jerusalem Bible. Look, just give me that old-time uh, translation. Give me that old-time translation. Uh, it was, what is it? It was good for J.B. Phillips. It was good for J.B. Phillips, etc. It's good enough for me. Uh, well, now, uh, the rest of the question... Um, please review for us your formerly given opinions on other translations, those that, those that you praise and those that you damn. Well, I sort of did that just then. I'm inclined to approve your damnations, assuming that axe grinders are at work like termites, turning it all into dust. Uh, it all makes me wonder if I should not just stay with the good old King James. Um... Well, I wouldn't abandon the King James, though it is a bit difficult to decipher. Its language was already somewhat archaic, even in 1611 when it was published. But it's often quite understandable. I, I believe I have heard that an old joke of mine has become fact that some Bible college offers courses in Elizabethan English so you can understand the King James Version. Well, it was a joke, but my my target there was the King James only mania. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with the King James. I don't want to yield it to those nuts. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to uh, study up a little bit on uh, the idiom there, because if you don't, some things are downright misleading. The big problem with the King James is it's based on corrupt texts. Uh, but there are some places where the King James gets things right that the more recent ones uh, don't, though the most recent do. Here's I'm thinking of uh, the way women are depicted. Uh, really, I guess there's, uh, there's three uh, items here. In Genesis, it says, uh, when the woman saw that uh, the... Uh, fruit of the tree of knowledge was uh, was good for food and desirable to make one wise. She took of it and gave to her husband with her. Now, the uh, King James has the with her because that shows they were both, it implies they're both on the scene. I know it's a, just a slight shade of difference, but without that, you get the standard view that she was alone, defenseless, uh, to be um, snookered by the serpent, and then went and, and uh, spread the infection to her, uh, her naive husband. But, in fact, they're both there at the time. At least that's the implication. The King James Version has that. For some reason, most modern translations cut out the with her. 
Don't know why, but the, the latest ones, like the new RSV and so on, they do add it back, and that is one good thing about the only good thing about that. Also in Romans 16, the text says, it has Paul uh, giving shout-outs to people he knows, including Andronicus and Junius, or Junia, uh, depending on how you take it, the uh, the accusative there, the ending, Junion, could uh, could uh, really refer, if only we had it in the nominative, we would know whether the writer meant Junius, a male name, or Junia, a female name. Uh, but, and everybody assumes it's got to be male, because he goes on to say, who are of note among the apostles. Wait a minute, that sounds like they are high-ranking apostles. Not the twelve, but that's a different issue. Uh, and, uh, well, there can't have been a woman apostle. It, even, it explicitly says that in the Bauer lexicon. Uh, but uh, that's begging the question. Uh, all sectarian movements are initially very egalitarian. They conform to the chauvinism of the surrounding culture a little bit later, but in their early days, they're typically egalitarian. So, yeah, it wouldn't be that surprising. And, uh, and in fact, it really has to be Junia, because uh, there is no such name attested anywhere in uh, the in ancient Greek. Uh, we have... Um, of, I'm sorry. We, there's no. There's no Junius uh, male. We have Juniatus, and, and this could conceivably be a shortened version of that, like Prisca to Priscilla. But there's no instances of that. It's just a, sort of a desperate. Uh, uh, inference to escape saying that it probably means the Apostle Junia. Well, again, the King James had that right. The RSV and the others didn't, but now the new RSV and the others do. Well, again, I applaud that, but there's so much dumbing down and uh, PC re-editing that I just don't... Uh... I guess the worst is Throckmorton's Inclusive Language New Testament. This is the guy that did that great Harmony of the Gospels. Uh, b gospel parallels, but here, oh boy. Um, uh, let's see now. Uh, also, Phoebe, it calls her diaconos, a deacon. It doesn't say deaconess, uh, and that's sort of important, and I believe King James had that right. Well, But uh, that's about it. But the King James does have its good points, that's for sure. Uh, now, what about the other ones? Uh, I like the RSV because it's fairly literal. Sometimes the, it's a little bit paraphrastic, but not much. The uh, New American Standard Bible, its cousin, is more is more literal. Sometimes it doesn't tell you that certain passages are not in all manuscripts, but it's pretty good about that. Uh, and uh, I like the uh, the literalness of it. Of course, it's nothing like the freak shows of uh, Kenneth Wiest's New Testament or Young's literal translation, which are helpful in a certain way, but uh, very strange in others. I really don't want to criticize them. They're, they're made for a very specialized study purpose. The Amplified Bible is... Uh, has a good intent, but is, is sort of dubious in effect it constantly will interrupt with parentheses containing various possible synonyms, alternate translations, basically, uh, and, uh, and expanded uh, meanings, like when it says believe in so-and-so, it will tell you the range of meanings that it also includes place your trust in, have confidence in, and all that, because they're trying to make the New Testament speak about a personal relationship with Christ, with some Something it does not ever talk about, uh, and uh, it, it gives you the idea. It's like the uh, the uh, what did Barr call it? The Kittle mentality that whatever a word in the Bible means in any context, that meaning is included whenever it's used. That's absurd, as Barr pointed out, and uh, that's the error, big time, of the Amplified Bible. Now, as to more, by the way, I say that the RSV and the NASB are cousins. They're both independent revisions of the 
American revised version from the turn of the century, which was already just an Americanized spellings and stuff, version of the English revised version from a couple of years before. If you read older books and they're trying to tell you, well, it may not be like the King James says, they will talk about the authorized version versus the revised version. The authorized is King James, the revised is the English revised version, or the revised New Testament. I have this beautiful old antique copy of the revised New Testament, beautiful old leather-bound book with these great engravings, illustrations, and so on. That's pretty neat, even by itself. But um, now, good luck finding the copy. But the RSV and the New American Standard are both revisions of of this, which but these were revisions of the King James, getting rid of the spurious, textually dubious, textually dubious material and and retranslating uh, things. But it sounds so much like the King James because it is a revision and correction and updating of it. Uh, the new, what's the new King James? Well, that is a, a modernizing of the King James translation, uh, like getting rid of these and thous and such. But it's based on, I think, the false notion that the Byzantine text family on which the King James is based is original, so that they'll have the... Uh, the angel disturbing the pool in John 5, they'll have the long ending of Mark, the woman taken at adultery in John as simply part of the text, as well as all the other little phrases here and there that seem to be additions. No, they don't, they don't like that. They, the, this cutting out of stuff, uh, they want it to be basically the translation they once grew up with. I don't know how many people grow up with the King James anymore. Um, they're they're all uh, stuck, I think, with the uh, the new international version. So what's the deal with that? The NIV, that is a kind of a white bread evangelical counterpart to the New English Bible and the Jerusalem Bible. It is it, it it's somewhat paraphrastic. It's somewhat loose. Needlessly so, I think. I say white bread because it's all so generic. It it doesn't help understand odd things like the Jerusalem and the New English, uh, J. B. Phillips, or uh, by the way, William Barclay's New Testament. Uh, that is a fascinating translation. Uh, he he will explain things economically and very naturally in his wording that you need to have background on. Like, what is the deal with the uh, old and new wine skins? Well, the old ones are uh, stretched out from having contained fermenting wine, and they have no more give in them. So if you put new wine in it, kaboom. As it expands, it's going to rip the seams out of the wineskin. Well, he manages to smuggle that into the translation very artfully. Uh, it's a very helpful, very good translation, the, uh, the William Barclay translation of the New Testament. Uh, it's what's it called? The, uh, oh, uh, boy, I can't remember them anymore. Uh, the Berkeley version, also known as the Modern Language Bible, or just New Testament, uh, that is very good. It's uh, it, To me, that is like ooh, kind of equivalent to the New American Bible. It is very literal, but, but sometimes with a slightly different spin to make it make more sense. I've always liked that one very much. Oh, I think the New Testament was done by this guy named Vercule, and uh, may have been done at Berkeley, or kind of sounds like the original name, so it's called the Berkeley version or the modern language New Testament. I believe the Old Testament was a committee product. An interesting one to get also is the uh, um, the Bible, an American translation. Uh, Edgar J. Goodspeed did the New Testament. He was a fascinating New Testament scholar. I forget the name of the guy that did the old. Maybe it was more than uh, than one, but that's rather interesting. 
Uh, I am not that familiar with some of these things that seem to be yet further revisions of the RSV. If they're not, they kind of read like it, like the uh, English Standard Version or uh, the Holman translation. They did a Passion of the Christ uh, movie edition of it, believe it or not. They seem to be fairly straight, literalistic translations. Then there's a whole crop of things that are, are uh, like the Living Bible, namely very slanted uh, evangelical paraphrases, fundamentalist paraphrases. Uh, and of course, one the biggest problem with the New International Version, which doesn't take that much liberty departing from the literal text by way of paraphrase, it does cheat in that it will conform Old Testament passages to the misquotations of them in the New Testament to hide the problem. They'll uh, add things like, instead of Jesus saying the mustard seed is the smallest seed, it says the smallest of your seeds. Uh, of course, I, being the Son of God, know the orchid seed is smaller, but you never heard of that, so let me, you know, all this nonsense. So I don't like the theological bias or this nonsense that uh, in uh, the Kenosis hymn in Philippians 2, 6 through 11, uh, though he was, though he had the form of God, etc., they say morphe um, could be translated, though he had the nature of God. That is not what it means. But they want to import Nicene Christology in there, right? So I don't like the NIV. It's not that there aren't good portions of it, but. Uh, I got problems with it. Well, the ones I'm thinking of are these ridiculous excuses for Bibles that Rick Warren, perhaps the stupidest of modern religious writers, forgive me, uh, uses all the time. I, I'm said in the Reason Driven Life that I read the quotes he has ostensibly from the Bible, and I think, what? I've never read this. And I look up the footnote, and it's in the. Uh, the uh, New Testament, uh, a slang translation, or the New Testament, a born-again paraphrase. Uh, those aren't the actual names, but stuff like that. And, and it's obvious they've just paraphrased it to reflect fundamentalist jargon. Uh, and if the Bible doesn't really say what we say, let's rewrite it so it does. They used to give Jehovah's Witnesses hell for doing this, to read their own Christology back into the New Testament, when in fact the Witnesses do not do that. They're, they're just slandered. Uh, in fact, the, in uh, Jason Badoon's fascinating book, Truth in Translation, he, show, he compares all sorts of versions on different problem passages. And again and again, the one that gets high marks is the New World Translation by the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, fascinating book. If you're interested at all in this, that's the book to get. If you're a translation fan and collector, another book you got to look on ABE Books for is um, uh, a, oh, a Guide to Modern Versions of the New Testament it, because it deals with... Uh, uh, with all sorts of, this is before the huge flood of translations, and it deals with a bunch of them, like uh, uh, the two different Williams translations, the, uh, uh, the uh, Olaf Norley's New Te uh, Simplified New Testament, uh, Phillips uh, Moffat, uh, Helen Barrett Montgomery, a whole bunch of fascinating uh, translations. Uh, and uh, that you, you really have to look for in used bookstores, and you can find them. Uh, the, a bunch of them make the rounds. Uh, and uh, th that's, I would look into that, too. I can't think of the name of the guy that uh, wrote the book, but it's uh, a guide to modern versions of the New Testament, I think. Oh, by a guy named Dennett? I'm not sure. Uh, I can't remember. I used to know it very well. Yeah, it is fun collecting and reading and comparing Bibles. 
I love Schoenfield's authentic New Testament. That was sort of my big inspiration for the pre-Nicene New Testament. 